you know what? Let's just have a very real talk about it. No need to construct a take. My lovely imps. My lovely, lovely imps. I have witnessed a lot of strange infighting in the trans community on social media lately. Not just on Twitter either. Um, although, of course, you know, uh, Twitter is definitely a place where some of this happens. Um, and one of the sort of central uh, features of this infighting is a focus on separating different categories of trans people into distinct groups. Um, there has been a, a, a series of discourses that have spun up about this of varying intensities. Some of them uh, very intense and unimpactful, some of them very intense and impactful, and some of them neither intense nor impactful. Um, but uh, there is a central theme, which is um, that there is this attempt to sort of separate trans people as a group into differing categories. Um, some examples of this. Uh, there, was a, there was a discourse a couple of months ago that was going around that was around the word they fab. Um, there has been a lot of discussion about trans misogyny. Um, uh, and also terms have been thrown around like uh, TME, which is trans misogyny exempt, and uh, TMA, which is trans misogyny affected. Um, these terms uh, have been used. Um, I have seen um, uh, erasure visibility discourse, which usually takes the form of people talking about how uh, trans women are hyper visible and trans men are uh, invisible, which um, there is some truth to that, but there is, um, but of course, nobody's ever actually talking about it in a realistic way. They're always engaging in basically what I consider to be a very hyper simplified version that borderlines on pure falsehood. Um, and recently, uh, there has been a, uh, a a sort of uptick in, and I've seen this myself, an uptick in sort of conflicts between uh, the the FTM MTF, um, uh, uh, you know, trans femme, trans mask communities. Um, these sort of conflicts, and um, there's something, like I said, the, cent the central thrust or the, the connective tissue between all of these different discourses is that there's this, um, oh, oh, there was another one I meant to mention um, that follows the same thing. So I'll, the connective t tissue, of course, is that uh, it's sort of separating trans people into these distinct categories that are, uh, that are non-porous, that there is no back and forth really between them or there is enough of a separation that they can't be considered together uh, in a lot of ways. Um, another one that I've seen a whole bunch is the, uh, you know, uh, anti-non-binary or non-binary versus uh, transgender, transsexual divide, which of course is laughable. Um, it, and I'll talk about all of these things uh, in just a second. But again, that one connective tissue uh, that I mentioned. Um, and, and, <sighs> I want to be fair to a lot of the people that are discussing these topics because I do see people bring up good points about lots of different things. And I'm going to I'm going to steel man some of these things just to show you that I'm not just I'm not just sort of paying lip service to the idea that people make up that people come up with decent points, okay? Um an example of uh like a steel manned version of uh, uh of the um, I'll even go so far as to say the non-binary versus trans uh, uh, conversation, one that I've talked about a lot. The steel man version of this is like, well, you know, there are unique struggles that people who are aiming to medically transition face as opposed to people who are predominantly interested in a social form of transition. Um, that's sort of the steel man argument. And there is truth to that, absolutely. People who medically transition uh, do have unique struggles compared to people who are only socially transitioning. But of course, you'll notice that the conflict 
is sort of built off of um, a false dichotomy. The idea that there are a whole bunch of people who are basically, uh, uh, they're medical transitioners and there's a whole bunch of people who are non-medical transitioners. But the reality is that these groups have massive overlap. Lots of people who, um, almost almost everyone who medically transitions also goes through a social transition and almost every person not all but almost every person who goes through some level of social transition will often engage in some level of medical transition as well de to depending degrees now there are of course people out there who do one or or whatever uh one or the other but that's there's a huge overlap between these groups and I noticed that the discourses often aim to basically dichotomize these groups instead of recognizing that there is a huge uh, there's a huge overlap there is shared genetics between these two groups that they're inevitably tied to one another um, and then there's this whole essentialization process that goes on um, another example of this um, is in the sort of they fab discourse that happened where um, people correctly and rightfully point out, hey, um, it is kind of weird to, uh, to take somebody's uh, pronouns and then attach their assigned gender at birth or, your, or their assumed assigned gender at birth uh, to their pronouns as, uh, to invalidate them. And that's what it is. That is what that term is supposed to do. It's supposed to invalidate their gender status. Um, and so that's on one side and people point that out. And then often uh, sort of the steel man version of the other side will say, yeah, but there's these people out there who um, are basically, you know, very um, advanced on the gender front uh, who might go, yes, I don't belong in the gender binary. I use they, them pronouns, but then ultimately uh, harbor uh, uh, sexist uh, attitudes. Oh, um, trans, you know, or trans or transphobic attitudes. The example that many people often bring up is um, the like they fab only housing is the term that some people will use. They'll say like, oh, well, what about these people who said that only, uh, you know, only people who are assigned female at birth are welcome, um, but they all use they them pronouns. Um, well, yeah, that's obviously pretty fucked up, and we can acknowledge that that's basically the exact same thing. Um, except arguably worse because you're you're denying somebody um, housing because of assumptions that you have about their birth sex that like somehow a trans woman is actually secretly you know uh, a member of like a bad sex um so um but again um this sort of discourse relies on a very very strange false dichotomy and the propping up of straw men the truth is that the vast majority of non-binary people out there um, don't engage in any of this sort of weird sex essentialism. Um, and the vast majority of trans people out there aren't going to experience that from non-binary people. They're going to experience that from cis people, right-wing cis people most usually, and sometimes liberal cis people. Um, and but but of course like there is validity to some of the concerns that are being brought up yes it is fucked up to basically wokely discriminate based on a uh, like poorly interpreted turf feminism um and and i've been bothered to see how successful it's been at driving uh schisms between trans people trans people who would otherwise love each other and be stronger together um and and a lot of it isn't even uh concrete it isn't actually about you know one person uh you know promoting and uh, believing in a problematic opinion there is a a essentialist essentialization going on in addition to a sense of sort of like ego-based tribalism where it's like well i have to be on this side of the conflict against those people um against the people who these people on the other side don't believe that my medical transition matters like there's anybody besides like a straw man version of somebody who believes that um and uh I i've seen this so so much um 
and it, it really makes me um it makes me bother it makes me sad um because uh again it's kind of what i was talking about a little bit earlier this idea that like um trans people online who need to go online in many cases to find one another become trapped in highly toxic social media um ecosystems uh and become conditioned to behave a certain way conflicts unfold a certain way online especially in modern social media and i really want to challenge people to to think a little harder about it to engage a little deeper um the the tme tma thing is one where i have heard lots of people basically say hey these are these are valid terms that illustrate a real problem. They are bringing up the idea that hey, like some people don't experience the same type of uh, general discrimination as other people, and there's truth to that. But there's also a dichotomizing that's happening there, and I think a lot of people uh, take the terms out of any sort of analytical frame. And they use them as a sort of uh, political line drawing mechanism. And I think we should be careful about that. Like, I want to gen genuinely caution people. Because I don't disagree that there is analytical value to terms like TME, TMA. Which, again, for those who aren't familiar with the terms, TME means trans misogyny exempt. And TMA means trans misogyny affected. There really confusing terms and really easy to get them mixed up. Uh, and ju just to be clear, I, I recognize I probably should have said this earlier, but since we're talking about this now, uh, the term trans misogyny refers to a very specific form of like a, a form of misogyny that is directed towards trans feminine people, uh, specifically and often trans women. Uh, it is a, uh, it is, it is the sort of intersection of being both identified as a woman and being trans. And you've probably seen this. Uh, this isn't some highfalutin academic term, but, uh, there can be trans women who are treated online as if they are women. They are treated horribly. They're objectified, sexualized, uh, talked over, talked down to. Uh, by cis men often in the same way that women are, you know, that all women are. Um, and, uh, but also at the same time, their womanhood is invalidated in the same, in the same level of, of motion. So it's, it's, oh, you know, we're going to treat you, uh, in all of the negative ways that we can imagine. All of the misogyny is there, but also we're going to invalidate your womanhood. You don't even get to belong. You are simultaneously excluded from the womanhood and included in all the negative ways. Hence the term trans misogyny. Again, not a highfalutin term. Um, just a simple and very valuable term. Uh, so now you understand the basic concept that I'm talking about here. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah techno gal says people saying you're too ugly to be a woman uh exactly like uh like 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 ugly women don't exist uh you're too ugly to be a woman uh, it, it's like it, again it's this it's this unique form of misogyny that we call trans misogyny yeah it's fucked up and cruel and messed up um yeah so uh these these again the term trans misogyny and even a discussion about who tends to be the target of trans misogyny and who isn't the con the you know the target of trans misogyny can be useful but i see these things get transformed from a a useful conversation that can be empowering that can give us tools into basically being a schism creation mechanism and I want to, I wanted to bring it to people's attention and give my opinion on it, um, that I think we should avoid doing that. I think that we should, uh, in, in 2024, let's make it our mission. All the trans people who listen to me and beyond, let's make it our mission to avoid schism creation machines. 
Um, we are stronger together. Our, our shared struggles are more than our differences. You, trans women sitting out there in the, in the audience with your, uh, your Ikea sharks and your programmer socks and your um, um, uh, gamer mouse uh, and your gamer pink gamer chair and your cat ears that you bought on Amazon. You have more in common with you, the trans man out in the audience, with your Tumblr blog and your uh, your Hamilton fanfic account um, and your, uh, your, your themed binders, okay? You, you two have more in common with one another than you could possibly believe, okay? I'm serious, I mean it. And, and God damn it, the beast! Nasty Redacted says, I'm cuddling a blow high that I got, I think that's how it's supposed to be said, blow high. Uh, but everybody says blahage. Uh, but Nasty says, I'm cuddling the blow high I got from my trans femme girlfriend. Based! Fucking based! Fucking based! That's what I'm talking about! Oh! oh I love to see it! The power! It flows! Oh, I can feel the energy! Yes! Our power grows! I will be reading all the super chats momentarily. Another bored person with the $5 says, Hypertrad trans people from hypertrad communities are trying to pass the hot potato to literally anyone else, and non binary people are the easy target. Yes, I do think that that happens. Yes, I do think that that absolutely happens. Yes. True, it is a sacred gift. To receive a to, to receive an IKEA shark from a trans girl is a is a is a is a a blessing. And obviously, there are way more types. I, I obviously was making a bunch of stereotypes there intentionally. Believe it or not, trans people come in all shapes and sizes. Some of us are big, strong, titanic demons like myself. Some of us are tiny gamer programmer nerds, okay? Some of us are, uh, uh, are twee bow tie wearing Hulakians. Some of us are lumberjack core adventure uh, queers, okay? There's a lot, okay? There's a lot. And we are more powerful together. We truly are more powerful together. We are always going to have dis disagreements with one another. It is, it's just being human. You cannot create a single, uh, you know, and we shouldn't want to create a single sort of unanimous, homogenous blob um, of everybody who agrees on every single topic. That's not the way that it works and that's not the way that it should work. Um, but we should learn to approach our conflicts, our, especially our inter-community conflicts, with care, with love, and with empathy. And also with the knowledge that it is a simple calculation of self-preservation. That we will do better if more trans people can take care of more trans people. Regardless of where you fall on the spectrum, regardless of, of, of what your terminology uses, whether you're a transsexual, or you're a uh, xenogender, whether you are uh, an, an agender, anti-gender, or you're a gender uh, ascensionist, it doesn't matter. We have more in common than we have apart. Uh, and while that doesn't mean that you can ignore all differences, I'm not saying nobody should disagree. I'm saying we should do our best to avoid uh, unnecessary conflict, that we should do our best to avoid schisma like that's not the right word that sounds like i'm saying schizo i mean schiz schism creating okay we should avoid uh, uh huge severances in our community that cause uh downhill um downhill effects okay 
especially when it's over complex topics that the answers are not easy for. The discussion of trans misogyny and how it functions in our world is not an easy discussion. That is a complicated discussion. Um, uh, the the uh, experiences and the, the sort of difference in experience between uh, you know, every trans person and every non-binary person is arguably impossible to, cap to qu quantify. Uh, every trans person and every non-binary person, every non-binary trans person, every trans non-binary person has a different experience and has different challenges. Some are going to be similar in shape and we should find the ways that they are and work together to make it easier for all of us. Um... Yeah. Gender ascensionists rise up. That's what I'm saying. I'm a gender ascensionist type. I believe we should as ascend above. That we can be beyond gender. Oh yeah, there was another discourse I saw people talking about, which was um an old one. Again, a lot of these have been around a couple times. And this one was about... Uh, about assuming gender based on presentation where it's like oh it's it's you know invalidating when people ask me my pronouns i would rather them i've put a lot of work into my transition i would i would prefer them to just assume my gender because i put a lot of work into my presentation and um that that conversation that's an old one you guys there's some some big fights that have happened over that arguably it was one of the first that that sort of conversation was one of the first uh, uh, well, I shouldn't say one of the first. It was one of the biggest I ever saw. One of the biggest, like, mass uh, toxicity events that I ever saw online. Or on Twitter, I should say. Jeez, why am I... I'm, I keep thinking, oh, wait, there was actually this one. Oh, wait, there was that one. It was pretty big. That's what I'll say. Um, Natalie Wynn's original cancellation was mostly over that one. Yeah. And I didn't even think her, her take was like all that hot. It was like a, a toned down version of it in my opinion. Um, and I think that there's arguments and things to be understood on both sides. For example, I think that the simple reality is that most people are going to assume anyway, no amount of, you know, uh, uh, no amount of people promoting uh, everybody saying their pronouns is gonna change the fact that for most of your engagements in society, at least in the foreseeable future, people are gonna make assumptions based on your view. Um, but also, uh, it really sucks for people uh, who aren't, who don't present the way you do. Um, like, is a butch trans woman any less valid of a woman just because her presentation isn't hyper femme and might mean that some people would assume uh, uh, you know, her, her gender incorrectly, I would say that, 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 that the idea that like she's less deserving of her pronouns being used is ridiculous. You know? Um, yeah. So, and I think that people could talk about this or could potentially talk about these things and come to understanding, um, uh, if everyone is able to move out of the hyper-essentializing hot take economy. Um, and I want to encourage all of my fellow queer and trans people out there to divest from the hot take economy in 2024 because uh, the stocks have been crashing for a while and you should cut your losses. <laughs> Unsub Diva Mama didn't use TTTT terminology. Uh, it's really funny, but uh, TTTTT, TTTTT is past my time, baby. I am, I am gratefully, uh, well, I, I don't know if I should say great. Uh, yeah, I'm gratefully, I'm gratefully uh, aged out of that type of uh, world. And anyway, hate to tell you all this, Sorry, but all of you TTT users, you're just rehashing all of the discourses we already had. None of it's new. You're living uh, in the pool of previously existing discourses. Um, it's really funny too, because TTTTT hasn't really come up with all that many new terms. 
In fact, one of their favorite ones, uh, a term uh, called Han, uh, H-O-N, is like the oldest. It's like the fucking oldest inter-trans community slur. And they fucking love that one. That's, they just, they're, and they're like, we invented it. It's like, bitch, it's been around for fucking ever. That's like a, a piece of, it's like a piece of radioactive uh, of matter that has a radioactive matter that's been around for a, a hundred thousand years and will be around for a hundred thousand years. Hun, like short for honey? Yes, as in short for honey. Not people doing a offensive French impersonation. And yes, uh, uh, get out while you still can. There is a better world for you. Uh, these, these like, these like self-hating toxic puddles that exist on the internet kill you. They choke you out. And there's more than one. Everybody loves to point at T, 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 but these uh, puddles exist elsewhere. They exist on Tumblr too. Um, a lot of people, uh, a lot of people love to point immediately at the uh, uh, at the sort of weird uh, sex and gender policing that goes on in infamous places like TTTTT, and then they ignore the sex and gender policing that goes on on places like Tumblr and Twitter. It happens everywhere, and there are some truly deranged ideas that get pushed around, most of which, I'll loop it all the way back around to the beginning of this sort of long rambling segment, uh, are about basically finding excuses to draw pointless separations in the trans community. Um, pointless separations that are sometimes built off of a nugget of validity, but nonetheless grow into something that is just not healthy and not helpful. Avoid it. Embrace a, a, a world where you can find a way to love yourself and other trans people because you will be so much happier for it. You will be so, so, so much happier for it. Anyway. That's all I have to say on this subject for right now. Uh, thank you so much for listening. If you are not subscribed to Demon Mama, why not? Press subscribe down below. And of course, make sure that you ring the bell. Thanks for hearing the signal.